So you already know how to find the exact value of trig functions. For example, you should easily be able to find the exact value of sine 5 pi on 4. But what if the question was a little bit different? The exact value of cosec 5 pi on 4. Well, it's actually really, really straightforward. So what are reciprocal trig functions? That's what they are. One on sine theta is the same as cosec theta. One on cos theta is the same as sec theta. And one on tan theta is the same as cot theta. And we use those three simple rules to solve cosec or sec or cot, reciprocal trig functions. So solving this one, sec 2 pi on 3, that's the same as 1 on cos 2 pi on 3. Now, what's cos 2 pi on 3? Well, it's in the second quadrant, C, A, S, T. It's going to be negative. Uh, so I can say that that's equal to 1 on negative cos pi on 3. And what's cos pi on 3? Draw myself like a little standard triangle here. Pi on 3, 1, 2, root 3. Uh, cos pi on 3 adjacent over a hypotenuse, it's 1 half. So now I get 1 over negative 1 half, which uh, 1 divided by a half is 2. Uh, negative, my answer is negative 2. Sec 2 pi on 3 is equal to negative 2. So what about cot 5 pi on 4? Well, that's going to be the same as 1 on tan 5 pi on 4, which, uh, if I draw my little standard triangle here, um, it's going to be down here, C-A-S-T. It's going to be positive. It's going to be 1 on tan pi on 4. And if I drew a standard triangle, 1, 1, root 2, uh, I would know that it's 1 over 1. So it's 1 over 1 which is 1. Cot 5 pi on 4 is equal to 1. So let's knock over cosec 7 pi on 4. Now we know that cosec is the same as 1 on sine theta, in this case, 7 pi on 4. Now 7 pi on 4, what does that look like? Pi on 4, 2 pi on 4, 3 pi on 4, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's in this quadrant here, C, A, S, T. So it's going to be negative, so it's going to be 1 on negative sine pi on 4. Uh, now pi on 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, root 2. Uh, it's going to be root 2 on 2. So 1 on negative root 2 on 2. Now if I divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction, uh, which is going to make it 2 on root 2 but negative. Now, I probably shouldn't leave it like that uh, because that root 2 is sitting on the bottom. Uh, if, if I'd chosen to use 1 on root 2 here, that problem would go away. But as it stands, I've gone too far now. So I'll multiply top and bottom by root 2. Uh, that will give me negative 2 root 2 over 2, which is just negative root 2. My final solution is negative root 2. That's about as much respect as this one deserves. It doesn't take a lot of work here. We're going to knock this thing over and get moving into some meatier work, doing some proofs.